actually remembered mine this time. Last time I preached, I forgot. 1 Peter 1.3, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, are we paying attention, 180? In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, the Bible doesn't mean this literally, right? It would be very difficult for you to be reborn physically. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if you woke up tomorrow and the entire world was new? Like you had no idea what you were looking at. You had no idea what you were hearing. You had no idea what you were feeling. This verse says that God has given us new birth. So let's talk about babies. We're going to talk about babies. I know a little something about babies. Harvey's wonderful. He's great. He's perfect. He's chunky. He's just a chunky fella. He's, he's, got, he's got some muscle definition. Even though he doesn't have muscle, it's just like he has definition somehow. Uh, Pastor JD sent us an update on Zion, and he's doing great. He, uh, he said he's eating a ton, which I don't know if that's just a boy thing or what, because Harvey also ate way more than was recommended for his age, and he still eats a lot. Uh, Pastor JD said he sleeps great during the day, and not at night at all, which is normal for babies, for newborn babies, because their cycles are switched. But speaking of babies, babies know how to do three things when they're born. It's actually more than three things, but I want to focus on three things. Someone said it. They know how to eat. They know how to sleep. We're not going to talk about crying, but I could preach a message on crying. They know how to breathe. They, yeah, that's good. That's good. They also know how to poop, but I couldn't figure out how to work that into the sermon and fit it in. So there's something there. There's something there. Someone could preach about, never mind. Never mind. No, we're not going <laughs> to. So the first thing I want to talk about, eating. Babies know how to eat. If you're taking notes, write down eat. E-A-T. Now, when babies are born, they know how to eat very basic food, right? Milk. All they can have is milk because they don't have teeth. They also, fun fact, babies cannot have water. I don't know. Something about their body can't process it yet. I didn't say I was an expert on babies. I just said I know things about babies. Babies know how to eat very basic food when they are first born. But can they do it on their own? No, probably not. Do you imagine? <laughs> My son is almost five months old at this point, and he's just now kind of figuring out that he has hands and that he can kind of, he can reach for things. He loves, oh gosh. I hold him, I hold him like this, right? I hold him like this, and he looks up, yeah, he just, mm, and it hurts so bad. But I have to let it happen, I think, because once he locks on, <laughs> you can't, you, can't you, you just gotta let him pull it out. <laughs> Babies have such good grip. Anyways. A baby, a very fresh newborn baby, cannot hold a bottle. Can't really hold anything. And so when a baby is eating, who is helping them? Anybody, really. Another person is helping them hold the bottle, hold it up to their mouth, taking it out when they start coughing and spitting up everywhere. So initially, babies need help when they eat. Eventually, they get older. They start to grow teeth. We just introduced sweet potatoes and uh, a cantaloupe 
and a banana to Harvey. And oh my gosh, you would think, his eyes, I've never seen them so wide. Can you imagine only drinking milk your entire life and then you taste a banana or a sweet potato? Milk's, can we, um, can we be real for a moment? Milk is trash. How many of you, I know, I know people like this, they will just sit down and have a cup of milk. Nothing with it. That's so weird. It's not, it doesn't taste that good. It's only good with, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Okay, so this is what I was going to say. Regular milk, white milk, only tastes good going with either cereal or something chocolate. Like if I'm eating a chocolate chip cookie, yeah, I'll drink a, I'll drink a glass of milk. If I'm eating a brownie, I'll drink a glass of milk. But I'm not sitting down and just drinking a glass of milk for my enjoyment. You do? <sighs> to each their own, but that can't be me. So maybe, <laughs> maybe you guys just have the, the diet of a baby. You just love milk. But as babies grow older, you start to introduce new foods to them, right? They don't just have to drink milk anymore. They can eat solid food. They can get more solid material. Now, sleep. Let's talk about sleep. If you're, if you're writing notes, write sleep. Uh, I was about to spell it, too. Babies are really good at sleeping. They just don't know when they're supposed to. <laughs> I'm speaking to some parents in the room tonight. <laughs> but the reason that they sleep so much, I want to take you back in your mind to that moment where we pretended that tomorrow you're going to wake up and everything's going to be brand new to you. You're not going to know how to talk. For some of you, you'd be like, oh, what do I do? You don't know how to look at things. Everything's just bright. The reason babies sleep so much is because the world is so foreign to them that their brain is processing everything that is happening to them. So their brain's on overdrive. They're working, they're working. Their body is growing. That's exhausting. You try being a baby. Y'all, <laughs> some of y'all sleep like you are a baby, You're taking naps multiple times a day. <laughs> Some of you are taking naps during class. Amen. No, do not amen that. <laughs> we need to have a talk with some, some teachers. And as babies grow older, their sleep cycle matures. They start to realize, oh, nighttime is when we sleep. I don't have to take six naps during the day. I can take four. Yeah. Newborns, let me tell you, newborns, all they do, sleep, wake up, cry, eat, sleep. They, that's thrown in there, yes. <laughs> but that's all they do. For the first couple of weeks, they just sleep. And it's because they're growing so much. Breathe. Everyone just take a deep breath. Some of y'all haven't taken a deep breath in a long time. That feels good, doesn't it? This is actually the thing that is easiest for babies. They need help with eating. They need help sleeping. They need help figuring out their sleep schedule. But breathing... They just pop out the womb and they're breathing, right? <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Tonight my sermon is called Born Again. And what this refers to, y'all are going to love this, a Greek word. Y'all know the New Testament was written in Greek? 
What was the Old Testament written in? Nice. Y'all are smart. The phrase born again in the New Testament is only used a few times. The phrase born again in Greek is anaganau. Look at your neighbor and say anaganau. <laughs> I love Greek, man. Anaganau. And when you translate that again, it really means born from above. Hmm. Hmm. And it's widely believed that the few times that this phrase is used in the Bible are the only times in history that it's used. Because what, what, how does that make sense? Born from above. What is born from above? A bird? Is that when a bird lays an egg and it falls? I don't know. No. <laughs> born from above is referencing God giving us a new spiritual birth. It's spiritual, it's not literal. If the Bible was literal, you would be locked up for telling the gospel. Now, you might get locked up still in some places. If you took the Bible literally, do you guys know what literally means? I know you do, because some of you will be like, oh my gosh, I'm literally dead. No, you're not. <laughs> yes. Even figuratively, I don't even know what that means. I'm dead. Thank you. So this refers to God giving us a spiritual new birth. And after this happens, you are considered born again. Y'all know that song? How many of you were here on Sunday? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all know that song we sang at the end of service, Praise the Lord, I've Been Born Again? It's been stuck in my head all week. I can't get it out. It was stuck in my head at human video practice all day on Sunday. I could not get it out of my head. I've been born again. So born again believers, let's take all those three things we just learned about babies and put them into context of being a born again believer. Yes. What's the first thing? What did we just go over? Eat. Oh, hold on, I didn't ask for number two yet. Number one, eat. Flip a couple, uh, a couple of pages in your Bible and go to 1 Peter 2, verses 2 through 3. This is crazy. This is crazy. Like newborn babies, huh? crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Can I get an amen? amen. The Lord is good. So what's the Bible telling us here? You are to seek Spiritual milk. What does that look like? I'm so glad you asked. Matthew 4, verse 4, says, Jesus answered, it is written, man, oh, that's not it. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So what is the Bible telling us? What are we supposed to eat? Are we supposed to eat literal food? No, but I do, I love it. I love literal, literal food. You <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is the answer I'm looking for. Laura said, eat the Bible. Uh, not literally, but yes, you're to consume the word of God. You're to get it into your life, into your heart, into your mind. But, if you're a new born again believer, you might not know how. You might not know how to hold your bottle. 
so you might need help. And that's what every person with a 180 leader shirt or a trusted adult, a friend who's been a believer for a long time, that's what they're there for. They're to help guide you. Because let me tell you, you cannot, I'm not gonna say you cannot, but it is very difficult to just go straight and read the Bible. If you were to become a Christian tonight, become a born again believer, hallelujah, and you were to just go straight into reading the Bible, you would be so lost. Because it's difficult. It's a confusing book. The word of God, like I said, it is not literal. There are a lot of confusing statements in there. So you reach out to somebody to help feed you. Now sleep, hmm, hmm. Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, they say this. Are you tired? Are you tired, 180? Literally? Are you literally tired? Are you spiritually tired? Oh, okay, come on. Worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. How many of you have ever had one of those good naps where you wake up and you don't know what year it is? Yeah. Yeah. You're so disoriented. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. This is Jesus speaking. Now, the record, <laughs> the record for staying awake, how, let me ask this. What's the longest any of you have ever stayed awake? 24 hours? 48 hours? Joe, do I even want to know? How many? 85. Was that boot camp? Mm. Can anyone be 85? <laughs> 85 would be... Yep. The record for staying awake is 11 days. Now, let me, <laughs> let me say something here. Do not try to go break this record. You could die. This record was set <laughs> under the supervision of doctors, they were, doing, they were doing tests for uh, sleep deprivation or something, and a, I believe it was a 17-year-old kid stayed awake for 11 days straight. And he had to be hospitalized after the attempt because that's not good for you. <laughs> you know your body's supposed to get sleep? Your body is supposed to rest. That's why babies sleep so much. So when was the last time that you rested your spirit? When was the last time that you just sat in God's presence and relaxed? No phone, no TV, heck, no music? When was the last time you just sat and talked to God? I'm betting for a lot of us, it's been a while. How long have you been awake spiritually? And finally, breathing. We eat. We sleep. We need to sleep. Not all of us sleep. We also breathe. Now, I said that breathing is one of the easier things for a baby to do when they're born. And let me explain how. I had my wife explain this to me. She's a doctor. She knows what she's talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. So babies, when they are in the womb, their blood is flowing in reverse. 
I heard that. And what happens when the baby is born, y'all know what an umbilical cord is? Y'all have a belly button? Does anyone know the, uh, the Veggie Tales song? The belly button Veggie Tales song? No. <laughs> We've been showing my son, he, he doesn't really process it. We've been showing him Veggie Tales, though. That and the cheeseburger song, oh my gosh. Masterpieces. Masterpieces. Huh? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. But babies, when they are born, they have the umbilical cord, right? That's what's supplying the blood to them from the mother. And when the baby's born, that cord gets clamped. And as soon as that cord is clamped, the baby's blood starts flowing properly. It reverses direction. And that's what triggers the baby to start breathing, their body to just activate. And from then on, they're happy. They're, well, they're not happy. <laughs> they're not happy. They come out crying. But the cord gets clamped, the blood reverses, and the baby starts breathing. In 1 Peter 1, verses 18 through 19, we're just hanging out in 1 Peter. It says this, For you know that your lives were ransomed once and for all, okay, that's good news, from the empty and futile way of life, handed down from generation to generation. So the old ways of doing things, that's gone. There's a new way. It was not a ransom payment of silver and gold, which eventually perishes. How many of you know that money is not forever? Some of y'all be chasing money like it's the only thing that matters in life. Silver and gold eventually perishes but the precious blood of Christ, who like a spotless, unblemished lamb, was sacrificed for us. I'm closing. I'm closing early. Let's go. So we eat. We sleep. And because of the blood that Jesus shed on the cross, the course of history was reversed. And you can breathe new life because of that. The Bible tells us that you are given new birth through God. If we go back to our original verse, 1 Peter 1, 3, you don't have to throw it back up. He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So because of what happened to Jesus, you can breathe, 180. And I don't mean literally, even though you can. I mean spiritually, you can take a breath. So why are some of you feeling like you can't breathe? Why do you sometimes feel like you're not getting any air? And I mean physically. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, you are able to breathe new life. You're able to rest spiritually. And you have to feed yourself God's word. That's what it means to be a born again believer. We say that phrase, and I guarantee you, a lot of people don't understand what it means. Born again. Born from above. God has given us new life. And you're going to get that opportunity tonight. But the first thing that I want to do, some of you said you... Uh, missed to see you at the poll this morning, and that's okay. What I want us to do, I want you to get into a group of five to 10. 
and stand up, spread out, stand up, spread out. 